On today's episode of Geek Beat, you'll hear nothing and like it. I'm John P. Let's build something. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by lynda.com. Hey guys, today we're going to tackle a subject you wouldn't normally even think about when it comes to our show production. But that's okay because we think about it all the time, and that is how to get the best sound possible to go along with our video. Since we've got a lot of production space, that means a lot of these tall, flat walls, and those things like to echo. Think high school gym. So in order to cut down on the echo and give us a professional studio recording, we're in the process of building several mobile sound baffle walls that we can put wherever we want, especially keeping them as close to our production as humanly possible. This is a four foot wide by six and a half foot high rolling wall covered in soundproofing. But to better understand how and why we're doing this, I'm going to give you a little demonstration using this $71 Monoprice sound isolation shield. If you need to do some audio recording, even in a bedroom of a house, this little Monoprice shield is the bare minimum you should consider. So let's take a listen. Right now, I'm saying a bunch of stuff without the sound isolation shield in front of me so we can get a feel for the baseline of how the audio sounds without any dampening. Nice. And now, I'm saying a bunch of stuff with a sound isolation shield in front of me so we can get a feel for how the audio sounds with dampening. Hopefully, that gives you an idea of why we essentially want to build giant versions of these shields. It's all about improving the quality as much as possible. So let's talk about how it's actually done. Now, as I described it to you, keep in mind I use a variety of tools and materials, but you can check the link below for the complete list of exactly what you'll need. The whole thing can be built for around 200 bucks if you stick to my script. First of all, we built a box frame out of 2x6s, which is designed to hold a nice flat piece of plywood. There's several ways one might go about this, but I chose the simplest, sturdiest, and most accurate method, which also requires a little more expertise and hardware to pull off. I started off by using a portable router mounted on a router table to create a 3 quarter inch groove right down the center of all the 2x6s. Here's how that worked. This, as I said, is a router table. And it has a three quarter inch square routing bit in it. Our router table is hooked up to a shop vac and we're using a really cool device called a dust separator. So we put this bin in between the shop vac and this thing. And what happens is it takes all of the heavy particulate matter and That's it drops them into the bin here so that we can clean this out and it keeps the dust out of the shop vac uh, filter. Um, so it's just an efficient way of doing it. Which in turn also keeps it out of our face. And which keeps it out of our face, which right. we appreciate. This is the finished result of what happens it's right cool. here. You can ah. see it made a groove right down through this one. Yeah. And uh, we're going to make a groove. We're about to make a groove in this one and a few more. And after we're done with that, then we can show you how it goes together with the other stuff. You ready, David? I'm ready. All right, bring it down. Break it down. Break it down for me. Okay, here we go. Once the boards are routed, I used a table saw to cut 45 degree angles for each of the corners in order to fit them together like a window frame. <laughs> I used the highest quality 3 quarter inch thick plywood sheet that Lowe's stocked, which cost about $55 each. I did it because these are the straightest, strongest boards they have, which will ensure they aren't warped while trying to fit them into a tightly routed straight line and also make them sturdy for long term durability. <laughs> 
Cal. We didn't want the walls to be eight feet high because we need them to roll through doorways, so I had them ripped down to six feet tall. You can either have the hardware store do that on their panel saw, which I highly suggest, or you can get one of these special edge guides for under $100 that allow you to convert a hand circular saw into a device that will easily cut a straight line for you across any piece of plywood. Again, the link is right down there for this tool. Once the board was cut, I began test fitting all of the routed outer supports around it. In places, you might need to use a rubber mallet or a hammer to tap it into the edge of the panel, but once it's on there, you can go ahead and use nice wood screws to anchor it in place. After attaching all the routed edges around the panel, I turned my attention to the feet. Essentially, I just needed to, to again pay attention to the width of a standard doorway so we could ensure it would roll from room to room, and that's how wide the feet became. A couple of 45 degree cuts rounded out the support, and with three inch wood screws, the entire structure became extremely rigid. Three more steps remain, but before we get into that, you know, if you enjoy learning how to do this, you'd probably enjoy learning how to do a lot of other stuff over at lynda.com too. If you head over to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat, you can get a week of free all you can eat tutorials to tell you how to do all of the actual production we're doing for building this wall or Photoshop, photography, graphic editing, and about a thousand other things. So check it out at lynda.com forward slash geekbeat. Let me know if you learned something awesome. Back to the story. After the legs were assembled, you could stand it up and kind of see where this thing was going, but by this point, it was so heavy, you wouldn't want to. So next, I went to Northern Tool and bought a bunch of heavy duty, non-marking wheels for about $10 each. I placed the wheels where I wanted on each of the support feet and marked holes to drill all the way through the wood so I could bolt the wheels on. I used washers and lock nuts to make sure they never get loose. When the stands were officially mobile, I decided to paint them black. I mean, if you're gonna go through all this trouble to build them professionally, they might as well look nice. So at this point, I dexterized the interior of our trailer and moved the wall in to spray paint it black with a specialty primer plus paint so I'd only need a couple of quick coats. Now, I only painted the outside areas that were not gonna be covered with foam because there was no reason to waste paint where the foam was going. Also, if you do this, remember to wrap the wheels so you don't paint them or especially the tires. You don't want paint on that. Once the frame was black, it was time to adhere the special soundproofing. For this, I ordered Soundtrax sound baffling for about 70 bucks and sure stick wall covering adhesive because it takes a special thick glue to fill in the holes on the foam and make it permanently stick to a smooth surface. Now at this point, I rolled on the glue nice and thick and began inserting the panels. As I got to the edges, I had to hand trim them to get the last panels to fit, but it was just a couple inches off of the top and just use a sharp pocket knife and be careful. So that's how I did it. The total cost was under $200 for all top of the line parts, wheels, wood, glue, baffles. So let's do a little test with me standing in front of it and not. <laughs> First, we're not using the mobile wall, baffle wall and I'm just talking into thin air. Next, we're using the mobile baffle wall and it should sound better even though you can't actually see the wall I'm facing. So that's it for today's little project. If you've got another project in mind that you'd like to see me tackle and explain, just drop a comment below or tweet me and I'll add it to the list. And if you found this little tutorial helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and share it around the interwebs. That's it for today's Geek Meet. I'm John P. See you next time. Me and my wall, we're, we're getting out of here. <laughs>